Welcome to the University of the Netherlands lecture series by Rolf Hutt. In this lecture I will explain how and demonstrate how you use mass spring systems to do measurements. The original lecture was in Dutch, this is the dubbing in English. It's a one-take dubbing, so my apologies for any limpsic issues. I also didn't dub the intro, so don't zap away in a few seconds. We'll continue in English right after this. Waarom hoeft wetenschappelijk onderzoek helemaal niet duur te zijn? Dit is de Universiteit van Nederland. These are all examples of the same mathematical formula in the real world. So this was um, this was at Mythbusters. They showed that you can really do this. So this is a zoom in. This is a macro lens. Oh, and and this um, we got a lab like that in Delft University of Technology. It's really cool to play around with. So for very different applications, and they're all mass spring systems. And to demonstrate that, um, in my previous lectures, I, I was drinking from this mug. That's going to be my mass. And um, this elastic band is going to be my spring. So, pre pretty simple. Just connect it to each other. There we are. Mass spring system. So, the cool thing about mass spring systems um, we've talked a lot about waves. Mass spring systems react cool to waves. If I if I give a very slow moving wave to this mass spring system, so you see, you'll see that the mug will move at exactly the same frequency as my hand. Well, it's not so strange that it moves with the same frequency. But remarkable is that the same amplitude as well as my hand. So if I move my hand a yard up and down, then the mug would move a yard up and down. However, if I, if I am excited with a very high frequency, oh yeah, it's, it's not a perfect mass spring system, but you can see the basic idea that the mug is going to be not moving when I move it very hard. And then, and then there's this one very special frequency where a, a, a small amplitude with my hand results in a higher amplitude for the mug. And, and you can even see that when my hand moves up, the mug moves down at this very special frequency. And if we look back at the very, very slow frequency, there the mug moves in phase with my hand. So um, I can put this in a graph. So how does a mass spring system react to different frequencies? So make a graph, we'll put frequency on this axis. And then here we put amplitude of the mug given a standard amplitude of the hand or what's the ratio of those two amplitudes so when i move very slowly with my hand then that ratio is one the same amplitude for the mug and the hand so at very slow frequencies we have a, a measuring point of a, a ratio of one but then at high frequencies, my head goes very fast, but the mug doesn't move. So the ratio is almost zero. Well, and I didn't do the ex entire um, experiment. But you could do this for all the frequencies in between as well, and then just measure it and poof it in a graph. I, I, I had to do that when I was a student. 
and that will look something like this. And then these are all your measuring points for the different frequencies. And well, if you interpolate and make a graph out of it, it would look like that. And then you can see that at low frequencies, the ratio is one, so the mug and the hand move, make the same movement. For high frequencies, the mug is, is standing still. And for this one frequency, the amplitude of the mug is bigger than the amplitude of the hand. And I'm going to put some marks around this because um, you saw that the amplitude goes in the, in the wrong direction. So in here we're talking about the absolute value of the amplitude. And, and I just showed you in those videos that there's multiple systems that are mass spring systems. So um, I'm going to demonstrate that with this system. So, um, well, I'm looking for the good connection. No, no I'm just going to explain it differently. So this is a uh, light organ. And you may have seen them at country fairs or here in Club Air if you've been here when there wasn't a lecture. What it does is when the lights go on, when the sound is hard enough, but then the sound comes from a mixer, so it's just electrical. So instead of a mixer, I have a very old piece of technology over here, a signal generator. And the only thing it does is that it creates electrical waves. And by turning this knob here, I can adjust the frequency of that electrical wave. Uh, currently it's at three hertz, so three waves per second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put that on this electrical mass spring system. I told you, you can find them anywhere. In this case, it's maybe hard to see, but over here I've got two condensators and two resistors. And together they are a mass spring system, but electrical. And I'll demonstrate that. So we'll put the signal of the signal generator on the left light bulb and the output of the filter on the right. And we turn down the light so we can see what's going on. Oh, I really love these, these old-fashioned uh, wire bulbs. They're, they're illegal in the Netherlands by now. So I, I picked a very low frequency and you can see that both of these bulbs have the same amplitude at this moment. And what I now can do is I can, I can turn on this frequency knob on my signal generator. And then at, at some frequency, you will see, well here, that, that the frequency on the, on the entrance of the filter is so high that the, the mug side of the filter, the output, cannot keep up with it. So the condensators and the resistors have the same function as the mug and the elastic, and I was moving very quickly, so no light comes through, so no electricity comes through. Final, final example has to do with water. We've been talking about water a lot in these lecture series. Um, yeah, in, in SeaWorld there's a warning sign that says if you sit here, then free willy can, can splash on you. Um, I should have put that up. What we're going to do? is I'm going to put this um, hose, just simple garden hose. I need an assistant, please. Can you help me? Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll get this entirely full of water like this. And then if you over there, please, could hold, could hold that. Yeah. And then I'm going to take the other, and then I'm going to put that in this small cylinder over here, and then very quickly, yeah, okay, great. So, we got a cylinder with water connected to this large basin. Um, just please stay put. So, you may remember this from your old physics classes, communicating vessels. The, the tube is completely filled with water, so the, the water pressure level in both the cylinder and the big tank is the same. But then if I make waves in the big tank, then the, the pressure waves 
have to go through that hose, but by the time it, it's in the small cylinder, it's going to be pulled back by the, the, the low part of the same waves. So you can see that um, if I use this little pirate boat to make some waves in here, that the water level in the cylinder will not change. So a very quick wave, a high frequency wave, will be damped in these communicating uh, uh, vessels. So, but then if I make a slow wave, like tide, I just get some water out, then you'll see that the water level in this cylinder slowly goes down until the average level in the big tank. And then if I, just careful, if I just pour this back in, you see all kind of waves in my big tank but you'll slowly see the level in the cylinder creeping up. So communicating vessels are secretly also a mass spring system. Um, thank you for my assistant. Um, I had a list of stuff that I wanted to do, Lego Imperial March, um, saying thank you to my assistant. Something I wanted to say for a long time. Okay, back to the drawing board. So we can put we can put the same measurement in in the same graph that I used for my uh, mug. So the high frequency waves were suppressed, but the low frequencies, the tide, were followed. So you so you'll see that it follows the same behavior as the mug and the spring. So let me just get the mug again for this demo. So this mug with this spring behaves exactly the same as an electrical filter system or as a communicating vessels system with a garden hose. So you asked about mathematics, you know it was coming, here it is. The relationship describing this graph is approximately, uh, it's approximately the amplitude is 1 over 1 minus the frequency squared divided by the cutoff frequency squared. The cutoff frequency is that point in the middle. So this says that the amplitude depends on the frequency and it depends on that cutoff frequency. So if I take a very slow, very low frequency, then you can see that the F is really, really small, say 0, 0.000 something. So if you take the square of that, it's even smaller, which means that this just says one minus something very, very small. So basically it just says one. So basically, you get 1 over 1 is 1. That's what we saw. The amplitude of the hand and the muck was the same when frequencies are much smaller than the cutoff frequency. On the other hand, if the frequency is much bigger than the uh, cutoff frequency, like this again, that you, then you'll see that F squared is much bigger than the cutoff frequency squared. So you can neglect you can neglect the one compared to this. So one divided by something really big is really small. So you see that the, the, the three different graphs for the different experiments, mug, electrical, and communicating vessels, are described by the same formula. And you can play around with that cutoff frequency. I've got some water here, so I'll, I'll add some water to my mug. I'll change the mass. You'll see that it, it's, it's not moving at a lower frequency than previously. So with a mass spring system, you can play around with the mass and the spring of the system. And that's great news for engineers, because 
I can decide where my cutoff frequency needs to be by playing around with my mass and my spring, or I can play with my condensators and my resistors. And that means that I can decide which waves I see and which waves I don't see at the end of my filter, my mass spring filter or my electrical filter or my communicating vessels filter. We can play around with the thickness of the hose, the length of the hose, to change that cutoff frequency. And that's really interesting if we go back to one of our basic questions for today. Can we not filter out those annoying high frequency waves and measure at a slower pace? So yeah, we can. And in my next lecture, we're going to build a measuring device together. Thank you very much.